I'm a science journalist and I'm specialized in environmental topics. So 10 years ago, I did an investigation about the quality of our bathing waters. And first what I found was that actually most of our beaches have a very good water quality. At least that is what the official tests of the governments show to us. But then getting deeper into the topic, I found something else. I found stories of people getting sick after being in the sea. These people were surfers. You know, these guys who are hours in the water trying to catch one wave. And some of these surfers even got ill at beaches that should have a good water quality. So at this moment, I knew I had to meet these people and I have to find out what is happening. I wanted to know how can it be that there is such a difference between the official water tests and what the surfers are experiencing. I started surfing, I guess, when I was about 15, 16. It definitely affects me. I often feel unwell or, or get colds, I think, sometimes after I've been in the sea. When um, I'm in the water, you can sometimes smell um, the, the washing powders or, or that slight sort of um, sewagey smell. On a déjà tous hein, dans le coin, les jeunes du coin, parmi les surfeurs, on a tous entendu des histoires de problèmes de peau, de boutons, de, de choses comme ça, parce qu'en fait, juste sous le wharf, il y a un spot de surf. Within two days of the holiday, you know, bright red eyes, you know, streaming uh, conjunctivitis, and yeah, left left ear just constantly getting infections, and it, that set up a weakness that then sadly went on to me just getting more and more infections, um, and uh, to the point now where I've got pretty bad uh, hearing loss in my left ear from it. So now you might ask yourself, why especially the surface? Well, I'm surfing as well, and you know, we, we always try to be in the water if you don't have to work. And so we are even in the water in winter times and when there are bad weather conditions because actually with the storms also come the waves. But unfortunately with the storms, there's also coming one kind of pollution. I will tell you later more about this. So when, when we are in the water, it can be sessions up to three or four hours. So we are in touch with the seawater all the time and fighting with the waves and diving under the waves. We are actually ingesting a lot of seawater. Surfers ingest 10 times more water than a, a sea swimmer. So surfers are really affected by the quality of the seawater. You could even say they are kind of bioindicators. They already did studies with the surfers. In England, for example, the University of Exeter, they examined the feces of the surfer and they found that surfers in their guts, they have up to three times more antibiotic resistant bacteria than non-surfers. And the only possible explication is that it comes from the seawater, from the polluted seawater. So now, why is our sea so polluted, so polluted that we even get sick from it? Well, before investigating about this issue, I even didn't know what is happening. Because, you know, you hear a lot about the plastic pollution, and it's a big problem. But the problem even gets bigger if you understand that the one pollution comes with the other one. So for example, sometimes maybe you went to the beach and you found little plastic sticks. They are white or blue or rose. These cotton buds, they are called. We clean our ears with it. So when you find a lot of them, it's a good chance that just a few days there happened a sewage overflow. So what is happening is that 
especially when it rained a lot, the sewage stations are overloaded and to avoid that the water, the dirty water goes up on our toilets, the, the gates, and the dirty water and everything goes into the sea. So everything what people throw down the toilet, so the cotton bags, ties, tampon applicators, and for sure also our urine and our feces, which contain bacteria and sometimes pathogen bacteria. Buscando olas con Tony Bat, empezamos a encontrar verdaderos vertederos en el mar. Cada vez que, que llueve mucho, se desbordan los pozos de decantación, las balsas de decantación, las depuradoras no están funcionando y entonces abren y todo va al mar. Surfeamos una ola aquí cerca grande y a veces hueles a caca. Cuando sales tu traje huele a caca, porque estás surfeando donde está el, el emisario de la depuradora. Y eso no es que pase solo aquí, pasa en todos los sitios. But it's not only the sewage pollution. There's another pollution that also comes when it's raining a lot. When it's raining a lot, the fertilizers and the chemicals used in agriculture are also flushed down the fields to the rivers and from the rivers into the sea. Now I want to remind you that in the beginning I said when there are these official tests, and usually they say that our water quality is really good. So why do these tests not detect this pollution? In winter, the explication is really easy. In winter, there are just no tests, because by law, these tests only have to be made in the touristic season, so during summer. But even during summer, the the tests are not made frequently enough sometimes to detect this pollution. All the tests are just made far away from where is the source of the pollution. So now coming back to the source of the pollution, I said we have the sewage stations, then we have the agricultural pollution, and then there's another third big pollution, which is the industry. This is Jean Vincent, he's a French surfer, he lives on the Atlantic coast and he one day he observed a very severe pollution at his beach where he's surfing from a paper factory. In this paper factory happened an accident and they discharged tons of black liquid into the sea, just into to the sea where Jean Vincent is surfing usually. And they discharged it through a big pipeline which is called Le Wolf de la Sadie. Twenty-five years from now, I learned something here. It was my first surf spot, the Wharf of La Salie. And, uh, you know, I was lucky. If you look around here, like, it's only beauty. It's only, like, pure positive energy. And uh, we are putting all those stuff in danger. We accept everything. Somebody will say, look, there's a huge industrial accident, huge pollution, but we are not responsible with that. So it will happen again and again and again and again until the moment, like, you won't be able to go to the ocean. You won't be able to, to enjoy those moments, you know, you won't be able to, uh, to smell the, the ocean breeze. And I want to tell you more about the story of Sean Vincent. Because Sean Vincent, he didn't just want to sit still and observe what is happening. He wanted to get active. So in the end, he even went to court to abuse, to, to accuse, sorry, <laughs> the paper factory for what happened. And after some years of fighting, he won the case. And Sean Vincent is not the only surfer who got active. There are a lot of surfers in Europe and also around the globe who are fighting for a clean sea. doing it. 
PNC, the first thing they told me is not because they are dying animals, which are, for example, entangled in plastic, that we see a lot of those videos on social media, or whales that are stranded on the beach with uh, kilos of plastic in their stomach. They even don't tell you about themselves getting ill. They told me about something much more fundamental, the feeling in their love for the, for the sea. For me, it's freedom and it's, it's everything that's me, really. It's spiritual, it's where I find peace. It feeds my passions, my artwork. I think it's just part of me, really. That's why I'm so worried about, you know, the quality of water, because, you know, if one day you want, you're not able to, you know, just enjoy those simple things, very, very simple things, you know, I'd say you will lose something. And I'm not talking only about myself, but I'm, not to I'm talking about, you know, people who are sensitive. You know, you have sensitive people everywhere, and they love those places. You know, it can be a forest, it can be a mountain, you know, and you don't want to spoil that. When you are contento or happy in something, you try to make that medium eh, always be well. The sea gives me everything with the waves, with the wind. I have to return it. I feel obliged to return it. So for sure not everybody is a surfer, nor everybody has to be a surfer. As just the surfers themselves, they said, for all of us, it's the same. We all enjoy places like the sea and the mountains. But now, most of us live in cities and all day long we work in offices. So in our minds, we even started to separate nature from our normal lives. We think in opposites. But it's not. And that is what the surfers show to us. We are not separated from nature. We are part of nature. And if nature is in bad conditions, so will we be sooner or later. So now it might seem that I'm also the activist in here. I want to point out that I'm reporting as a journalist. I'm reporting what the surfers told to me. And I'm reporting that they told me about their feeling of being part of the nature. And there's nobody who could express this better than Tony Butt. He's a big wave surfer, an environmentalist. So I want to give the last word to him. Thank you. It's much more attractive for people to try to modify the environment, and then they don't have to, to modify their own behavior. They don't have to sort of train their minds or train themselves to react in sequence with nature. And surfing is surfing in real waves in the ocean. The whole thing of anticipating the swell that's going to be coming, um, trying to guess the wind direction, the where to put yourself, and all that is trained over years and years and sometimes decades. And it all focuses down to that one point where you turn your board around and you catch the wave. And what you've actually done is you've trained yourself to fit in with the, the rhythms of nature.